I'm delighted to share with you that we have put together an invigorating agenda that spans key themes of engineering in a smart world, empowered ecosystem, democratization of technology, and the critical issues of skills development. We'd also like to take this time to say a big thank you to all our speakers and participants who have traveled from all over India and across the globe to join us on the 11th edition of the NASCOM Design and Engineering Summit 2019 at this beautiful venue in the Garden City of India. NASCOM expresses its sincere thanks to all the sponsors and partners for their support, which has helped us in putting together this world-class event, and I hope you truly enjoy this experience. The theme for this year is Future of Engineering, Designing an Intelligent Ecosystem. At the summit this year, we will look at how the ER&D sector is prepping up for the next big design revolution by embracing latest innovations and translating all possible imagination into engineering practices to match the pace with the evolution of the digital era. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Ajay Prabhu, Chair NASCOM Engineering Council and COO Quest Global to deliver the welcome address. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ajay Prabhu. Good morning. All right, so, so thank you for coming in the record numbers. Actually, this time we are having record number of delegates expecting more than 500. Thank you for your uh, support and encouragement. <laughs> Engineering R&D, we all belong to an incredible industry, don't we? I mean, everything around you, whatever you look at, is engineered by somebody, and probably some engineer from our community has had something to do with it. Whether you took a plane today, whether you came here in a car, and even if you took a truck, probably somebody uh, designed from here. One of our engineers would have influenced that. So we are doing incredible things. We are moving people. We are connecting people, whether it is cell phones, computers. We are uh, healing people, medical devices. We are influencing the world in, a, in an incredible way. We all belong to that excellent uh, community of engineers. So the overall engineering and R&D spend in the world is supposed to be $1.5 trillion this year. Of that, about 90 billion gets offshored. And incredibly, this community is serving about 32 billion of that, which is a lion's share of that $90 billion offshore. So great accomplishment in terms of from a modest beginning some 20 years ago, we have built an industry that's uh, delivering one third of the offshore engineering. The other big share is coming from China, and all the rest of the countries in the world together are delivering about one third of this uh, offshore uh, engineering. So it's a very good uh, achievement, of course, but what is the future? That is what we are here to discuss and figure out. The future is uh, looking very interesting. All these years we had been talking about convergence of mechanical engineering and uh, electronics, talking about mechatronics, and now that has really transformed into more of a digital, not just mechanical and electronics, but software as well as digital technologies, thanks to all the development in the com computational power as well as the communication of data. So more and more our end customers are expecting an experience rather than an equipment. So that is the big transformation that we ourselves have to make and make sure that we align ourselves. By 2025, this $1.5 trillion spend is expected to go to $2 trillion. And out of that, if we didn't do much, we are expected to grow to about $66 billion, okay, if we didn't do much. But that's not what we are about, right? We want to do something more and better and I would like us to aspire to be a $100 billion industry, not just double our revenue, but triple our revenue with all the support and extraordinary <laughs> efforts that are going to happen from this community. So for this to happen, as the government of India is talking about $5 trillion economy by 2025, how can we be a $100 billion contributor to that? And for that, I think we need to have the same animal spirits that is being talked about among the engineers. 
You think the an animal spirit exists in engineers? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, so I think, uh, you know, let's see how, how we can put that together. So I'd like to uh, share the engineering uh, uh, R&D council. You know, this is what we have uh, really, uh, after much discussion and uh, debate, we have kind of thought of ourselves as uh, somebody that we can be a digital engineering hub for the world, founded on innovative and technical excellence, as well as trusted, abundant engineering uh, manpower. So can we be $100 billion revenue industry? And for that, we will have to add 1 million more engineers. That is equivalent and, in fact, more than what we have achieved in the last 25 years. Has to be done in the next six. But if we believe in flywheel effect of a business, all the past experiences and education and learning, if it is going to contribute and if we do it right, it is very much possible. And the ERND Council, which is made of many of the industry leaders from this community who are putting voluntary effort, they are doing a great job strategizing and figuring out how this can be done. So I'd really like to thank all the ERND council members. If you can just raise your hand, there are many of them here. And all the rest of the delegates, do talk to them and give your feedback as the day goes along, uh, as the summit goes along. So uh, next slide. This is how we have organized ourselves, our big plan of achieving this $100 billion revenue target by adding 1 million people, engineers, uh, is going to be executed by these uh, team leaders. So I'm very happy to have uh, Karthik, uh, Karthik uh, Natarajan heading the business part of it, then the innovation and research headed by Madhav, Madhavan. Uh, the giving back to the nation is a big agenda for us. There is a lot of support we need from the government to be able to do this, but in return, what is it that we are giving back to the nation? What is it that we are doing to partner with the government? So is, a, is an important agenda for us. So that will be executed uh, by uh, Samir Yadnyek. And similarly, on this challenge of one million more engineers, Manjunath Hebar will lead that effort. We can grow a lot by encouraging our startups and SMEs really well, and that is a charter for Vinod Sood, then uh, for government relationship, influencing the policy and making sure we are doing the right things on that, uh, Dr. Uma Maheshwar. And to bring about the right narrative, to make sure the world really recognizes the engineering talent and brings more of the business here, I'm having uh, Mohit Kocher uh, lead that effort. So it is this team that's going to execute. So they are all here. So please do talk to them. I do need more volunteers for specifically SME and startup, if you are passionate about that, as well as government relationship. If anybody is really passionate about that, do talk to these two gentlemen and we need your support. So with that, I hope that uh, we'll all come together and have great conversation in this uh, summit and talk about how actually we would all work together and achieve this. Uh, last but uh, not the least, I'd really uh, like to thank Karthik Natarajan who is chairing this summit, who has done an incredible job uh, right now, so far with uh, NASCOM uh, to pull this together, the record number of delegates. So thank you all very much and look forward to great conversations.